Okay, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. I'm honored to be here today with some of my colleagues in law enforcement to announce our third takedown of a major drug distribution network in as many weeks. Uh, representing the New York State Police, we're joined today by Lieutenant Colonel Frank Kohler, uh, Bureau of Criminal Investigation, and Major David Krauss, the head of the Community Narcotics Enforcement Team. Uh, they are extraordinary partners in law enforcement, and we have worked with the State Police on all three of the major takedowns in the last three weeks. My office is represented today by Deputy Attorney General Perry Kadanoff, who runs our Organized Crime Task Force. Um, we're also joined by Deputy Chief Chris Vasta and Investigator Brad Farrell, who coordinated the investigation uh, for our office. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, uh, the Orange County Court unsealed an indictment of 13 defendants charged with conspiring to allegedly funnel heroin from New York City to Orange, Sullivan, and Nassau counties, as well as Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The indictment charges the defendants with a total of 179 criminal counts. The defendants who are on this board are all suppliers and dealers. We did not charge any individuals who are solely end users. The alleged kingpin of this ring was Brian Bacon, who referred to himself as the Prime Minister. Uh, he is charged with operating as a major trafficker, the only felony narcotics charge in the state that carries a possible life sentence. Uh, the Prime Minister is being recalled, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we also allege that Bacon distributed up to a kilo of heroin every month through this network uh, of resellers. Bacon worked with his son, Tamar Dillard, who's pictured below him, and his girlfriend, Donna Mary Hagens, to package and deliver the heroin to customers and sellers. We allege that Bacon, uh, the self-proclaimed prime minister, was also assisted by Wallace Walker, who was called his quality control expert. This was quite a ring. Um, this fellow was supposedly in charge of quality control, uh, who distributed heroin to third parties, but he was also in charge of testing the heroin and then rating the quality so they could figure out how much they could cut the drugs and the price they could charge. The, the main resellers uh, allegedly supplied by Bacon were Jerome Turnbow from Newburgh, New York, Roderick Copeland from Upper Manhattan, Jamal Aziz from Sullivan County, and Kenneth Paris from Uniondale, Long Island. So this ring distributed drugs uh, in a lot of parts of eastern and southeastern New York State. Every time the heroin changed hands, it was allegedly cut again with contaminants and chemicals, which made the heroin possibly even more dangerous and allowed the resellers to supply more customers with the diluted and contaminated product. As alleged, Bacon regularly sent his son Dillard to take the Metro North train from the 125th Street station in Harlem to deliver drugs to Turnbow in Newburgh. Turnbow also traveled by train to New York City where he would buy heroin to take back to his headquarters in Newburgh. This was a mass transit using ring of heroin suppliers, which is why we call it Operation Iron Horse. Uh, another one of the main resellers, Roderick Copeland, uh, would allegedly gave heroin to a co-conspirator, William Thomas, uh, who regularly traveled uh, to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, again using mass transit by bus from the Port Authority, uh, where the heroin was distributed. And we are, um, through the Interstate Heroin Task Force, which I co-chair, working with the our colleagues in law enforcement in Pennsylvania on the Pittsburgh part of this ring. A very good example of the reason we set up the Interstate Heroin Task Force in the first place. So we have these men on public transportation sitting next to families, to tourists, carrying huge quantities of deadly drugs and dirty money. Uh, they clearly thought no one was the wiser, but our investigators were watching and listening. Uh, Bacon, the, the ringleader, was especially conscious of surveillance and was difficult to follow or track. He moved frequently and erratically, often changing meeting locations. But thanks to the dedication and tenacity of our law enforcement officers, our team has been able to build a very strong investigation and case. As I mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, this is our third takedown of a major drug distribution network in three weeks. The tragic reality is that heroin abuse is a problem not just confined to inner cities 
or any particular type of community or even any class. It's a, it's a problem not for just people who are down on their luck. It is a problem for middle and upper class people as well. And the families are dealing with this in every part of the state. So someone sitting next to you on the Metro North commuter train to Beacon or the Greyhound bus to Pittsburgh, uh, in this case, could have been carrying a large quantity of dangerous drugs. And in the last three weeks, in these three takedowns, which were um, in the North Country, up in the northern part of the state, near uh, Watertown and the Canadian border, in eastern New York, in the Albany area, in the Hudson Valley area, and now down in the Bronx, Nassau County, Orange County, and uh, moving all the way over to Pennsylvania. We've arrested in these three takedowns more than 60 heroin and cocaine dealers, dismantled their networks, which stretched from the Canadian border to Manhattan and Nassau County and, and beyond. It doesn't make any difference to our investigators where these drug traffickers and their cronies live. Our jurisdiction stretches from Buffalo to Montauk, from Plattsburgh to Bowling Green, and we intend to do whatever we can do to protect the people of the state of New York. What you see on the table um, is some, some of the heroin, some glassine bags, stamps, and scales that we const uh, confiscated during this investigation. This is a small sample of what our investigators have seized in the past three weeks. And in the last three weeks, we've really seen it all. We've seen drug compartments hidden in wheelchairs, celebrity code names, trap doors, prime ministers, everything. But while these dealers are devising more and more schemes, our investigators are listening in on wiretap phones, patiently gathering evidence and setting the trap. And that's how over the last four years, uh, we've made more than 560 felony narcotics arrests and seized more than $1.5 million from drug dealers. We've taken more than 2,000 pounds of illegal drugs off the street, and we've also recovered guns, knives, cars, and, and a variety of other paraphernalia and weapons. We have, at this time, more ongoing investigations in other parts of the state, and we want today's announcement and the, the announcements of the last three weeks uh, to eliminate any remaining sliver of doubt in the minds of any drug dealer anywhere in the state of New York. Uh, if you want to deal death in our communities, we will find you and you should expect the full force of New York State law and the law enforcement community of extraordinary investigators and prosecutors that we are, work with to come down on you uh, with all the weight they can. No matter where you live or what you call yourself, Prime Minister, King, Senator, uh, it's an, you, we were going to go after you. And I want to say now that it's an honor to introduce a great ally in the law enforcement community who has been helping lead this effort to crack down on heroin distribution all over the state and, and has been a part of, of so much of this work, uh, New York State Police Lieutenant Colonel Frank Kohler. Thank you. thank you. Well, thank you very much, Attorney General Schneiderman. On behalf of Superintendent Joseph D'Amico, I'm privileged to stand with the Attorney General and the Organized Crime Task Force to announce that we have shut down another major drug trafficking organization in, in, in New York State. The individuals arrested and charged today are responsible for bringing a large amount of heroin from New York City to local communities in various counties such as Orange, Sullivan, and Nassau County, as well as Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. For nearly a year, the state police members and our law enforcement partners have been working this multi-county, multi-state case, gathering the intelligence that's needed to bring this operation to a halt. The results, of, as you've just heard, are 13 people arrested and a large heroin distribution network disabled. These people had no regard for the damage that these drugs can do to our communities. They transported dangerous narcotics by bus and by train from New York City to all of our local communities. By shutting this operation down, we are keeping dangerous drugs from making it to our streets. Heroin use has been on the rise in this country and especially in New York State. It has become cheaper and more readily available. Heroin is a powerful addictive and kills people. It does not discriminate. We have encountered all backgrounds, teens, adults, white collar, blue collar. They are all potential victims. By getting these drugs off the street and stopping this business, we're preventing crimes, preventing more addiction and more importantly, saving lives. 
I want to thank again Attorney General Eric Schneiderman for his leadership and his efforts in combating these drug networks from our communities. I also want to thank Perry Kadanoff, the Deputy Attorney General who leads the Organized Crime Task Force and her great team of investigators and prosecutors. And I especially want to recognize the dedication and the work of the New York Police, the State Police Community Narcotics Enforcement Team and all of our law enforcement partners. This case really speaks to the incredible interagency cooperation and coordination that we all share in the law enforcement community. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, I want to just call your attention to one other thing that's not so easy to see, um, but the Prime Minister had brand name products. So these are the stamps, fly and open, uh, that identified his products in particular. Um, this was a very sophisticated, very large enterprise, and we're very happy to have taken it down. And at that point, Matt will open it up for questions. Oh, por qué no? Esta es la tercera vez en dos semanas que acabamos con otra red de narcotráfico que enviaba drogas peligrosas a nuestras comunidades. Vamos a encontrar y someter a los narcotraficantes donde quiera que se escondan. And just to, I'm sure you're this, to answer this question, this is someone who we are in the process still of tracking down, and we are not revealing anything about him, so that process can can move forward. Okay. Take some questions. Identify yourself. When was Mr. Bacon arrested? Well, they unsealed the indictment this morning, so we've gotten everyone starting. It started last night, and we've now got 13. We've got 10, 10 already in custody, and three that we're working on. Uh, no, he actually didn't like publish a book or an article explaining his rating system. But we're pretty. This this ring, unlike some others, clearly had as a part of its business plan to cut and cut again the heroin so they could spread it out more so they were selling a weaker product but also a product with who knows what other contaminants in it uh, as, as they dealt this kilo a month or whatever they were dealing to people. We don't think he really was a quality control officer. That's what they called him. They had it with them in in the bags they carried on. They apparently were fairly nonchalant about it. So uh, again, they, just like I, 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 they looked like people who they certainly called no attention to themselves. It's not as though we got a lot of calls from people who said they're strange people on the Greyhound bus or Metro North. So they tried to blend in, and uh, this is sort of unusual. Uh, and it and it added an additional element of. Uh, uh, of danger to this particular gang's M.O. because they were carrying it in train cars and on buses with lots of other people and if something had gone wrong there could have been uh, uh, other other problems, perhaps violence. Well, it varied. It, it varied and they they alternated what they had. They had carry-on bags, and it depends on the particular time how much they were they were moving around. We know the pattern of the movement, um, and that the the this, this most of this started out in the Bronx. But the Bronx Newburgh connection was 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 very important, and they were um, uh, and Newburgh is is a wonderful city that's had troubles with with drugs and crime in the past, and this is. We hope is going to make that uh, that city a little bit safer. Sorry, back. 
Um, whatever, this is, he hasn't been arraigned yet, so that information is not public. Uh, we we don't think so. It's we don't we didn't frisk them on every every stop. But they, this does not appear to be, have been a gang that carried a lot of guns with them in, when they were traveling. Well, we have an ongoing investigation. Uh, New York has become probably the most the most significant uh, transportation hub for heroin in the country. This is, as uh, the uh, Lieutenant Colonel mentioned, it is uh, an incredible problem all across the country, but in New York, because of uh, it's, it's the source of a lot of the trafficking, it's become a real problem, and we are seeking to use all levers in our approach to this crisis and, set up, and have only set up fairly recently the interstate heroin task force, so we're now able to share information much more seamlessly with our colleagues in other states. But New York is, is a major hub, if not the major hub, of heroin uh, entering the country. Apparently not. They, there were, and there were specific individuals who were a couple of people running back and forth on Metro North from Beacon. Manhattan, one particular person was involved mostly in, in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania trips. So they had different assignments. They, some of them were you know, obtaining the drugs and then dealing them out to these various networks. But you can see that from this, the headquarters, Uniondale, Long Island, Monticello, New York, Manhattan, and Manhattan to Pittsburgh, and then Newburgh, which was uh, which was a major uh, a major destination for the drugs of this ring. Yes. Yeah, last With Mr. Oh no, Bacon Bacon was was the ringleader. This is his son. So they were, he was involved in distribution to these various wings of the chain. And again, um, we've the other uh, rings that we've busted up in the last two weeks each had a different geographical locations that were the destinations for the drugs in the North Country in uh, Albany and the Hudson River Valley. These folks had uh, four branches for distribution, Uniondale, Long Island, Monticello, New York, Manhattan, and Newburgh. And then the Manhattan guys ran the drugs over the Greyhound bus to Pittsburgh. We have uh, we've seen this sometimes in the past, although large dealers uh, have tended, in more cases, to uh, use their vehicles. But this is just a part of a much larger problem. It's uh, it's hard to convey how quickly and how devastatingly heroin dealing and heroin use has been growing in the United States, and it is uh, it is through mass transit, it is through cars. We've captured cars with hidden bottoms in the trunk. Uh, there is a wide variation of the methods used by these folks because there's huge amount, there are huge amounts of money to be made. It's cheaper, it's stronger, and more people are using it. I think that particularly as dealing with young people, uh, the stigma associated with heroin seems to have been lost. I, I know that years ago, even kids who partied a lot would not think of going near heroin. That was associated with junkies and a different type of lifestyle. And that has been lost. Now we see college kids, as, as Lieutenant Colonel said, uh, middle class, white collar, blue collar, every neighborhood, every community, and uh, a lot of use by adults as well, by people who are just uh, regular old working Joes in different communities. So we're doing what, everything we can do to deal with it, and that includes breaking up the drug gangs. It also includes our uh, national model uh, effort to stop the distribution of prescription drugs through the iStop program, so you can't doctor shop in New York. Some of these dealers are bringing in large quantities of oxycodone and other drugs 
from other states because you can't doctor shop here. You can't collect, collect them here. And there was uh, an arrest uh, by the Rockland DA and uh, U.S. Attorney for the Southern District that, that was focused on oxycodone dealers uh, yesterday, I believe. So we're all working together, and we're taking every lever available to us to try and deal with this, uh, and we will continue to do so till we end this epidemic. Thank you. Thank you.